and now we uh, we are going to welcome Mrs. Glenn Richards from Microbiome, the USA. Welcome. Okay. Good morning once again. Um, I am Glenna Richards, and I'm representing uh, Microban International. And Microban is located in Huntersville, North Carolina, uh, in the United States. Uh, we are the antimicrobial division of the Bar Brands International Organization, a leading manufacturer of cleaning and remedial products. Since 1984, Microban has been leading the antimicrobial industry and partnering with more than 300 prominent brands and manufacturers worldwide to develop novel technologies that protect and preserve surfaces. Today's presentation will explore four topics. The general behavior of microorganisms on exposed surfaces, how antimicrobial coatings, uh, coating technologies protect surfaces, a brief overview of microbands established and novel antimicrobial coating technologies, and finally, a snapshot of some of our upcoming technologies. Microorganisms, also known as microbes, are living, but they're too small to be seen without a microscope. They can exist as unicellular or multicellular entities or as cell clusters. Generally, when we speak of microbes, we're referring to bacteria, moles, yeasts, algae, and sometimes viruses are included in this group. However, viruses are not included uh, at times because of their differences in structure and lack of independent metabolic capabilities. As a group, microbes are widespread and abundant in nature. While there are beneficial microbes that bring advantages to humans, health, and environment, there are others that are detrimental to their activities. They can cause Ill illnesses, food spoilage, surface staining, bad odors, and reduce the product to use life. Exposed surfaces are predisposed to microbial contamination, attachment, survival, and growth. Microbial attachment can occur within five to 30 seconds of exposure. Under ideal conditions, such as where there is moisture and high levels of nutrients, some bacteria can double their population on a surface within uh, every 20 minutes. Factors that support microbial activities include the biological features of the microbial cell surface, chemical and physical properties of the surface, environmental factors, as I mentioned before, nutrition, moisture, and temperature, and time. The impact of microbes on surfaces is exacerbated by longer uninterrupted exposure. Here are some examples of microbes recovered from common utility surfaces. A kitchen countertop, laundry baskets, telephones, toothbrush, trash cans, yoga mats, flip-flop slippers. As you can see, exposed surfaces can be breeding grounds for microbial attachment and proliferation. So what are the resulting challenges? Microbial activity, can cause surfaces to appear cracked and disfigured and unattractive. Some microbes, such as the pseudomonads, have pigmented cells that cause staining of surfaces. Other microbes, 
emit waste products as gases and cause off odors. These effects shorten the product's use life, necessitating premature replacement. To address these concerns, antimicrobials are used. And what are antimicrobials? Antimicrobials refer to chemicals that are used to inhibit microbial attachment, survival, and growth. They act by various mechanisms. They can be narrow in spectrum, acting against specific classes of microbes, or they can be broad in spectrum, wherein they are effective against many or most groups of microbes. Antimicrobials can be incorporated or applied to surfaces, thereby making them inhospitable to microbe survival. So while we're not able to prevent contamination, we can address issues that will uh, uh, cause the microorganisms to multiply and survive. Antimicrobial coatings are surface treatments that contain antimicrobial agents that are specifically designed to add protective and hygienic value to products and surfaces. As demonstrated here, when an antimicrobial treated surface is contaminated by microbes during normal use, the technology incapacitates the microbes thereby preventing microbial survival and multiplication, and by extension, protects the surface from being overwhelmed by microbial survival. So what are the considerations when selecting an antimicrobial coating technology? The nature of the risks associated with a contaminated, unprotected surface is critical. For example, are risks associated with premature product deterioration, or are they associated with disease transmission in, in a healthcare setting, or both? What are the mechanical and performance needs? Is it a surface that is exposed to high touch? Are there limitations in terms of accessibility to hygienic practices due to the nature of the material or due to its location? What is the expected use life of the product? How many times do you wish to wear an article before washing? What are the end goals of the applied protection? To add protective and hygienic value to products? To extend use life? Prevent transmission of microbes via contact and touch? All these factors together will determine the choices that are made with respect to the antimicrobial technology, the uh, technologies that are offered. At Microban, our technologies are divided into two categories, the permanent versus the supplementary. Given that our portfolio is so large, it is critical that we have a way of designing to suit our multiple partners. So permanent antimicrobial coatings refer to those that are either incorporated during the manufacturing process or applied onto the surface after manufacture. The antimicrobial efficacy of an article that is treated with an antimicrobial coating is retained for the life of the coating that has been applied. These can be applied to various types of uh, matrices, such as ceramic, uh, polymers, textiles. The supplementary antimicrobial coating treatments, these are temporary applications that are intended to support sy systemic and systems approach to hygiene. 
And we have the spray-on liquids, such as the residual microband 24 and the SANI 24, as well as removable films that are um, treated with the uh, antimicrobial and they're removable. So let's talk a bit about the permanent antimicrobial technologies that we have in our uh, portfolio. I consider these to be microband legacy products. These are not wiped off or rubbed off. They're permanent. The durability is for the life of the coating. They're intended to, they're called treated articles and they're intended to reduce the bio burden on a surface within hours after contamination. They protect the product and confer hygienic value. For ceramic products, the antimicrobial technology is fired in, meaning that the antimicrobial is permanently incorporated as part of the ceramic glaze, the upper surface, during the firing process. The objective is to inhibit the growth of microbes that cause stains and odors on the tile surface. It is not a coating that can rub off, nor is it dependent on sunlight to work effectively. It works to exert its antimicrobial flooring product protection of the surface, regardless of light or moisture. This is an example of outstanding permanence of antimicrobial product. And the test method to assess the efficacy of this treatment is the ASTM E3031. Treated ceramic products have found their way into several aspects of our lives. The, we have examples of partners here. Uh, Libby, which has the porcelain glaze dinnerware with microband. Uh, Donpang, the ceramic floor tiles. And the Panaria group with ceramic um, coverings. The upper uh, the rightmost photos show um, in the upper right hand corner the scanning electron micrograph shows treatment, uh, sorry, untreated ceramic surface showing E. coli biofilm. And the bottom below that shows treated ceramic surface which does not have biofilm growth. Polymers. Antimicrobial treated polymers have found wide application in general products such as laundry baskets, door handles, gym equipment surfaces, etc., as well as specialty applications in healthcare and in the food industries. And this is an example with our partner, Metro, and this is used in the healthcare industry polymeric shelving units. And there are different polymers beneath. Uh, but they have, and they have different coatings depending upon the application and where uh, these are, are being used. Uh, mostly they're polyolefilms and they provide uh, excellent UV stability. The antimicrobial efficacy for these products are measured using ISO 22196 and GISZ 2801. Post forming. These are antimicrobial coatings that are applied subsequent to the manufacture of the product. And there are numerous coating approaches. Typically, they are cross-linked coatings, and these are the most superior. They can be powder coatings, epoxies, lacquers, urethanes, melamine formaldehyde, urea formaldehyde, and ceramic coatings. Uh, the considerations for these applications include hardness, wear resilience, UV stability, and exposure to cleaning solvents as well as aesthetics. Other examples include water-based epoxy coatings, uh, solvent-based 
coatings and urethane coatings. Other examples uh, are our foam cases with polyurethane chemistries. They're protective, but they offer soft flexibility. Uh, and the screen protector, uh, door handles with hard wearing um, that uh, help to resist knocks and chips and scratches and offer a significant level of durability. Textiles. Textiles are treated to protect the wearer, protect the textile from odor development and degradation, prevent textiles from acting as carrier slash transmitter fomites, vectors of microbes. Monomers of polymeric antimicrobial agents or cross-link forming antibacterial polymers and compounds can be used for direct coating of textile substrates. They can be applied on textiles from aqueous solutions by pad dry cure methods or by exhaustion methods. The benefits are they contribute to sustainability by keeping garments fresher, reducing laundering, and prevent premature disposal of garments. So here is an example of a product that's treated. It forms a barrier. And as the odor comes in contact with the barrier, it's neutralized and dissipated. The odor is eliminated as contact is made and without washing after, and so it prevents washing after each wear and prevents odor buildup. The supplementary to the permanent are topically applied to products and surfaces. They're not part of the article to which they're applied. These are highly relevant on high touch surfaces, textiles, and in the healthcare industry. As I said before, they can be spray-ons or removable films. So here are examples, an impregnated stick-on film on a high touch surface. And then our latest product, the Microband 24, which is um, used to support our permanent products. They're spray on to support cleaner surfaces in multiple different environments. A new genre of technologies that offer residual protection against microbes between applications to deal with rapid, and repeated recontamination of surfaces post cleaning. These address the challenges of rapid and repeated recontamination of surfaces post cleaning. So for emphasis, they offer a rapid disinfection within minutes and they offer residual continuous killing protection for a period of 24 hours before there is need for reapplication. And these products have been registered with the EPA and, they're, um, and they have gone through the EPA 011A residual disinfection uh, treatment and they are registered products. Here is data from a study that was done in a hospital setting, an ICU trial with total bacterial counts from bed rails. So the limit, hospitals try to maintain a population below 200 CFUs per 100 centimeters squared. That's the baseline, 250, I'm sorry, 250. And the competitor, you'll notice that upon application, the population drops below the threshold, but within five hours, there is a rebound of the population but for the uh, SANI24 product, the microband product, the population is maintained below that threshold for the 24 hour period. And this was a three month trial conducted in an ICU with microbands residual disinfectant showing effective suppression of the bacteria over the course of a day.
So there are regulatory considerations. Antimicrobials used for coating technologies are subject to regulatory control. To register a product, the manufacturer must provide information to regulatory agencies, and these include formulations, efficacy claims, toxicity data, and labeling claims. In the United States, treated articles and antimicrobial coatings and end use registered as pesticide devices are regulated by the EPA under the FIFRA, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. In Europe, treated articles are regulated by the European Chemicals Agency, ECHA, under the Biocidal Products Regulation, BPR, for the appropriate PT type. And microband products are registered in both the United States, Europe, and Asia for use. Hello? So in conclusion, antimicrobial uh, products bring invisible protection and visible cleanliness. They reduce surface staining and odors. They help to extend the product shelf life. They can be permanent or temporary. They've been proven by science and trusted by manufacturers and they support regular cleaning and hygiene um, activities. So we call this a systems approach to protecting products and surfaces. Traditionally, the emphasis has been on bacteria and fungal control. The pandemic has created an awareness, and so we're looking forward to antimicrobial coating technologies that offer antimicrobial, sorry, antiviral or viricidal efficacy. And we have been actively pursuing quite a bit of testing using the ISO 1884, ISO uh, 21702, as well as the EPA 011A testing. Thank you very much for your attention and questions are welcome. Hi, Glenna, it's Graham. Did I understand? I, I've Sorry. Already, I, it's Graham here, Glenna. I've already answered the question about UV stability in the chat. Oh, so I'll, um, I'll just reiterate. Did I understand? Well, microband is also providing UV, UV stability of plastics and coatings. And Graham, do you want to take that question? Yeah, I just said no. The antimicrobial technology does not provide any additional UV stability. Okay, thank you. And then water-based coating, is there a limitation in the in-can stability for certification of the performance? No. Sanitized products, if I use antimicrobial paints, oh, that's for sanitized. I think I have addressed all the questions here. Did I miss any? Well, the last one is also for you. I'm trying to see it. How can we, I just want to understand the question as for sanitized products. Yeah. We're not sanitized. No, I understand, but as a, for sanitized products. Oh, if I produce antimicrobial paints with your active in Italy, I will need to register mm. it if I want that claim. So at the moment, we are waiting for registration. So in this transition period, everything is permitted, but only the brave can do it. So that's not a question, is it a statement? Are you expecting me to comment on the statement? As you wish. As you wish. Well, it's, our products are registered uh, for use in the, um, in the in, in in Europe. I think if I if I can also assist here, uh, the regarding the biocidal regulations of the BPR here in Europe, the claims will dictate whether or not you would need to register that product as a biocidal product or not. If you are making
making a claim beyond the surface, then you are then reclassifying that coating or product as a biocidal product. And yes, you would have to register it. If you keep the claim to the surface and surface protection, then no, you wouldn't. Does that answer the question? I think you did. I think he mentioned, I think he's responding in the chat. He said, yeah, okay. yes. And um, we have Graham online, as you've heard. Uh, Graham is our uh, representative there in, uh, in Europe, and uh, he's very knowledgeable in the world of antimicrobial coating. And I would encourage you to reach out to Graham. Thank you very much for having me. This was a wonderful experience. It was a pleasure to meet everyone today.